that today's focus is on do you want to feel strong and getting yourself to believe. My guest today, the adored and highly respected Chuck Hammond, 74 years young, originally from Kentucky, previous mayor of Fairfield, mentor, previous track coach, and 25 years in insurance, was also a good friend of one of the most widely regarded significant sports figures of the 20th century American boxer and activist Muhammad Ali, who also had a strong sense and belief in self and knew what it took to achieve his own form of success. So thank you, Chuck, for being here or speaking with me today. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to do just a little bit of a Nora Finch intro, and then we're going to go right into questions. And I am very excited and looking forward to today's show because I'm sure uh, Chuck and I could talk for hours and should start our own meetup group because uh, I love talking about this is one of my favorite um, subjects along with love. So I wanted to talk about, I know he has a lot of things to speak on, but today's focus was going to be uh, about belief in self and believe in belief in love should you desire that in a companion. But I do believe it starts with self. Okay, so belief in self, what does it really matter? It matters because it has everything to do with what you think you can or can't accomplish. In my eyes, it is unfortunate that I don't feel our culture supported me as a teenager, along with my parents' um, lack of support in that area, but I'm thankful to have taught myself what I know today so that I am able to teach my daughter as well as teens and adults, and now with this podcast as my platform. So what I would like to tell you out loud today in terms of believing in yourself and wanting things for yourself, it is not an act of selfish. It is not an act of selfishness to give to yourself and want happiness, love, and to pursue our dreams. We have been told no, shot down by authority figures and the media, including our parents, some parents, as well as we have been influenced who have told us who they think we should be, act, think, and look like. So it's no wonder we think we have such a hard time. It's no wonder that we have such a hard time accepting ourselves. So from the ground up, how do we pick ourselves back up? I believe that we do that by believing. So my special guest today, Chuck Hammond, and I are going to show you how to open your eyes and your heart and remind you of the importance of believing in yourself, even during times of rejection from from the world. And then I'll finish up with some action steps. So we sat down a few weeks ago in talking about discussing what we're going to talk about today. And I wanted to talk about the belief in love is one of the things, if you so desire it with a companion, as I think there's something to be said of staying with somebody for 50 years, he told me with his wife, and that with all the media that has talked has taught us this is also one of my favorite topics while I believe in deep love with one person I think there are many things that have been distorted in these teachings to us but that is another show but we are going to talk about that because I do think he knows something about love like me okay so Chuck one of the first things you said it seems like it's very much impacted your life and moving forward. And I don't know that your mom was your only mentor, but you told me that she said one of the things that stuck in your head is that when you were viewing other people's, whether it's um, the houses they had or material possessions or whatever it was, she said, if they can do it, you can do it. And that always stuck with you, right? Absolutely. Okay, so do you view her as one of your mentors, and how how much did she help you growing up? She is the mentor. There is no no, no one compares to her. Aww. She told me at an early age that if they could do it, so can you. As long as they're doing it the right way, as long as they're doing it God's way, and they're achieving a life success, fine. Mm-hmm. If they're not, no problem. But with me, I would watch them and I'd be I'd a- admire them for what they were accomplishing. And she was just told me one day, she said, nothing special. You do, if <laughs> they can do it, so can you. And that's been my role model forever. So what happened when you would come home from school or, you know, you're having an issue, whether it, any sort of issue, right, with your teacher or maybe like with your grades or whatever, you know, area that you were struggling with? Was she able to help you kind of push through those challenges? Oh, yeah. In fact, I would come home sometimes, and um, I didn't do as well 
in school that day. I didn't get the grade that I wanted. And uh, the first question was, did you study hard enough? <laughs> and the answer was no. She said, well, you, you have your answer. She was always right. She was very direct with me. So uh -huh. we didn't beat around the bush. She uh -huh. just flat came to me and said, did you study hard enough? No, I didn't. Well, there's your answer right there. She knew what to say pretty much. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So did you yeah. have, okay, so then you were at that 